guys! Welcome to my newest video. Thank you for clicking on it. Today's video is all about microchipping. So I wanted to go over something super super important that everybody should do for their pets and that is of course, like I said, microchipping. Microchipping is a very simple procedure although it looks worse than it actually is. It's just the insertion of a tiny little microchip about the size of a grain of rice into the subcutaneous area of your dog's skin or your cat and it just kind of sits in between the shoulder blades. A lot of people think that this is actually a really painful thing. It actually hurts no more and no less than a regular needle. It's actually quite good to do for your animals and I actually really highly recommend it. And there's a few reasons for that. You can microchip almost any pet. I don't know why you would microchip some of the smaller pets, but I suppose you could. Generally, microchipping costs around the price of $50, and a lot of dogs or cats that are from breeders are already actually microchipped. If you're going for a local rescue, they're usually also microchipped. If you're going to the OHS, they're microchipped. Everybody kind of does microchipping nowadays. When you get your animal microchipped, or if you purchase an animal that is already microchipped, it will come with a pamphlet that states their microchip number and it will have stickers with it and you need to keep those stickers because that's the... The stickers have the number that correlates to the microchip number that is attached to your animal. Some animals will also get a tag to go on their collar that will have something that says that they're microchipped. Usually what I recommend doing with those stickers that come with your animal is putting it on their health file. Like I have a file in our filing cabinet for Finnegan and we have one for Sir Pounce and on the top of their file is their microchip number. So that way if they ever need to go to the vet or I ever need it, I can just grab the file and it's right there and it's handy. The one thing about microchipping that you absolutely need to keep in mind is that you have to have to have to keep your information updated. If your animal gets lost and you've moved and you haven't updated the information or your phone number, it's going to go to that address or you're going to get a call from your, to your old number and then you won't know that your animal was actually found. Are there any dangers with microchipping? No, not really. Um, I mean, if your dog is immune compromised, then possibly maybe infection at the site of injection but I don't think I've ever heard of that. Sometimes the microchip can migrate a little bit, but does it migrate to other like complete tissues? No, it just generally migrates a little bit up or down in the back. So that's why when we scan a dog or cat for microchipping, we go from the base of the neck down to the tail just in case, and we do it a few times and kind of wave it around the entire animal just to cover our bases. Um, I've never really heard of a microchip being deactivated. I've never had any issues like that. Finn's had his for two years, Pounce has had his for six, and they're still active. So I don't have any concerns with that kind of stuff. But the one thing that I do have a concern with, and this is actually why my animals are actually tagged, is that if somebody picks them up and they don't have their collar on anymore, so the, end, the person doesn't know that they're, they're microchipped, or they don't care that they're microchipped, the only way to tell is if you have a microchip reader or that tag. So that's why I always have collars on my dog and my cat and they have that tag that says that they are microchipped. God forbid, I mean, if they lose their collar, it's not gonna help them. I would hope that as a responsible person, if you found an animal, you would take it to a vet or a, a OHS or something to that degree to see if they are microchipped and uh, hopefully your information is up to date and the animal is returned. But if the person isn't caring and they just fall in love with your animal and want to keep it, the only chances of it being returned to you are if they bring it into a vet and they go to microchip it themselves, they'll always check if there's a microchip in the animal beforehand just in case and your information pops up, they'll be like, hey, what's going on here? But that's the only concern. I mean, the other thing is if the person doesn't 
have the resources to take it to a humane society or a vet if they have a tag on them on their collar with your updated information then it aids in the return of your animal as well so I would always always keep a tag on my dog especially but cats as well because cats frequently get out and I would suggest also microchipping because it's a safe procedure it's been done enough effectively that there is no real harm in doing it and it really really helps with the return of an animal especially if it gets picked up by uh, animal control because they'll always scan an animal before they put it up for adoption. But that's my suggestions for microchipping today. I hope this video is helpful to you. I hope it clears up any questions that you had if you were thinking about microchipping but you weren't sure. And that's everything today guys. My question for you today is, is your pet microchipped? Ours both are, so we're covered for that. That's everything guys. Keep on hopping. Thank you.